<laughs> hey, hey, Joe K. All right. Uh, all right. Hey, everybody. So it's 312. We've got a few minutes before we get going. I just want to make sure that um, we are cooking with gas and all that kind of fun stuff. And um, we'll, we'll kind of dive in and, and take a look at take a look at things. So and I'm sipping some piping hot tea to, to keep me going here. So if I if I yell or scream, don't take it personally. It's like, wow, that was hot. Um, <laughs> yeah, and and Joe, that's awesome feedback. Joe's just saying like, hey, I've been using Quick Hits since it first came out, and noticed that it's very reactive to the S and P's, a little bit slower on stocks, and I prefer SD. Yeah, and that's great feedback. And um, yeah, each one's a little different. And um, so we're gonna just gonna um, you know, that's what we're here is we're just going to kind of talk about, you know, some of the stuff and things like that too. So I, um, I've updated all mine, so we're not going to, so I was going to compare some of the, you know, some of the new version and the old version. Uh, but I don't, I just, you know, I really, I don't necessarily have that except, you know, for some old screenshots, but if you've been using it, you know, you know, you, you kind of know what it's talking about and stuff like that too. So, um, so what we're going to do is really just we're here to talk about um, we're just we're just here to talk about this kind of these updates and stuff like that. So let me find a I'm going to find one that's a little messy. OK, so this one's a little messy. All right. So welcome, everybody, to. Um, so so. Um, I did a class on this a little while ago called Quick Hits, and then the tool for this is called the Trend Rotation. And as you recall, there are three tools. Count them one, two, three, and let me find, I'll find that one too, because that might make our lives a little bit easier, at least in the beginning. And I have so many charts opened up, it makes it interesting. There, 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 there. Oh no! Where other oh, it is? Okay, so so basically, uh, this is this is it, right? So this is the these are the three tools that were released under the Quick Hits class, and I'm just going to get my little drawing guy going here, and there we go. And now, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, um, like you don't know what these tools are, that's okay. And um, it's probably worth hanging out just to kind of get a sense of what they are and stuff like that. Uh, this is geared towards people who took the class, who have the tools. And then the idea with this is that after customer feedback and some ideas that I had, um, uh, Eric spent a lot of time redoing the tools based on all this. And so I just want to kind of go through and talk about what that means. Now, as you recall, there are three main ones. There's SD, regular, and the squeeze. And how I label these is this is the fast, this is the fastest one, this is the slowest one, and this is the medium one. Now it doesn't mean that faster is better. It just depends on what you're doing. The slowest one is great, like for stocks, and if you're trying to stay in something a little bit longer term, you know. And then the SD is great if you're trying to kind of catch, you know, kind of stick and move. And then uh, the rotation is kind of a nice in between. So, you know, so a question can be then, what are, you know, what are some of the things that kind of came up? Uh, in terms of you know things that might look better with these, and so we'll we'll start with just kind of the trend rotation, and let's look at this. Uh, we'll look at this two-minute chart here. So here's a two-minute chart of the SPX, and so what were some of the things that popped up here, and what were some of the uh, feedback and things like that, and so probably the biggest thing was, um, you'll see. Let me squish this down a little bit here. So a couple things here that were pretty important. Um, the first thing is, is that the dots weren't doing it for me. So if you guys recall, we had these little dots that would happen on a turn, on a on a cross, and and uh, and that, in the or a turn, and that that just wasn't doing much for me. I don't, you know, the dots to me were kind of hard to see. So as we look at this, then, and in fact, there was a really interesting just yesterday. I think it was we can kind of see like, okay, how does this kind of guide us, you know, in and out of this? I'm just gonna remove one of these things here. For now, and actually, you know what? So let's just let's get rid of everything on here that's not the uh, rotation. Uh, 
Okay, so here we go. So the only so what I have on here is this, I've marked down the 4100 SPX price level and then the 4150 level just because, you know, they're big important levels. We want to know where they are. And so the idea with this then is how do we stay, you know, how do we stay within this groove? And if you're familiar with this, you'll, you know, and I've talked about this a little bit in the room, but some of the things that that I was really interested in here is that, you know, down here, of course, we've got multiple time frames at work. In fact, there's six time frames here. This is a 2-minute chart. So I'm kind of looking at the two minute rotation, uh, the four minute rotation, the 10 minute rotation, uh, the 20 minute rotation, the 30 minute rotation and the hourly rotation. And what this means is on multiple time frames, I'm able to kind of see what's going on. And so, you know, if you see the longer term time frames, like this is the 10 minute stair stepping higher, um, it's really a good sign that the market is gonna keep going, okay? And then when you finally see it start to roll uh, that 10 minute here. Remember, this is the 10 minute momentum. We're watching it on a two minute chart. Um, we can start to see like, oh, okay, well, what's this mean now? So a couple things here is that when when it changes color here from light blue to red, and by the way, the colors here, you can choose them. Um, normally this should be green and red. That's that's probably something that's more familiar, you know, something like uh, like this, you know, green is up, red is down, um, but you can choose kind of whatever color you want to. So within the context of this, there's a couple of things I was interested in. First of all, um, I wanted to know that in this case, when the 10 minute was dropping, okay, and then it turned higher, I, want, I wanted to know. So here it can say 10T. So that's just telling me that the 10 minute turned, okay? Um, I can see an arrow here that, uh, you know, another one turned. I can see the arrow that this one turned. And then we're kind of going like, okay, great. Now I can see arrows here when the two minute and the four minute cross. Okay, that's telling me that things are, right? Everything's getting better. And then up here, I see the 10 minute crosses, okay? And by the way, when that happens, we've got alerts pegged in so that I can know when um, the 10 minute crosses, okay? This is not something we had before. So here I can see an alert that it turned up. Um, and then, you know, or turn down or something like that. So that, that was, that was pretty nice, but probably the biggest one in here. And now I just need to find an example of it is, let's see. And it's probably easier, frankly, if I look at the S and P's, cause you get more back and forth there. So the biggest one here, and a lot of people had asked for this. And, um, at first I was, you know, when I heard of it, I was just like, well, what you know, what is that going to do? And then as I as I listened to this, it was it was pretty amazing. And I really liked it. And, you know, the idea that and there's actually a little bit of it there. Let me find some. There was some at the open here I was looking at. I'm trying to find an example that really stands out. OK, right. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, right here. OK, so the under the old way, what would happen is that Okay, so this one rolls over and we'd see a dot. Okay, and, that, and that's fine. Now you get an arrow. And then, and of course right now, if I minimize this a little bit, you'll see we get, we get a label too. So it's a little more, so it stands out a little bit more. So, all right, so here it rolls over, we get an arrow and then we get this label. So we can see that it's rolling. Now, what happens though, is that we would never see anything again unless it crossed, okay? And so it does cross here, and we do see that. But in the meantime, right here, it doesn't get to zero, but it turns back up. Under the old system, there would be no signal here at all. You never saw, um, you never saw a turn again unless, you never saw a turn up unless it was below zero, and you never saw a turn down unless it was above zero. So now, what we found though is that when you come down like this and it turns up those are oftentimes are some of the most powerful ones because it's just showing you how strong that market is in this case you know it's you know this is after hours so you're not getting a lot of bang for your buck here but that was something that was super important so we really like that and, and i'll go through all the labels and stuff like that here so does that make sense so i'm trying to find another example here um let's look at the nasdaq today So on the NASDAQ, I thought there was one here on the NASDAQ too. It's subtle, but it's very, you know, very powerful. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, kind of, kind of right here. So, and again, when it's overnight like this, it's gonna be quieter. But here, you know, you turn lower and then you turn higher here. You haven't crossed zero under the old system. You never would have gotten a signal there. So, so that was kind of a big one. All right. So, um, so from there, you're gonna see that we've got, you know, 10T then 10X, and that just means that we want the 10 minute to alert us when it's turning and then also when it's crossing. All right, so if we go underneath the hood here and we look at all this, you're going to see that, of course, you know, this, these are the default options, you know, three, 10, zero, if you want to see all the turns, exponential close. Now, if this many time frames is too many and you just want to see three, uh, that's fine. You can, you can choose three. I don't mind saying six, so I'm just going to keep it at six. And then uh, what I have here is I've got the um, two minute, four minute, 10 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute, an hour. Now, one thing to note here is kind of under this new guidelines that the uh, the two minute here, it does have to be divisible into all of these higher time frames. So that's why I have four minutes instead of five. Uh, that's why I don't have the 15 minute. And so if I wanted to, you know, be able to do that. I could change this to a one-minute chart. Obviously, one's divisible into everything. I could do a three-minute chart, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, we have all this written down and documented too. We're just kind of going through this. So on this particular two-minute chart, I've got the two, the four-minute, uh, the ten, the twenty, the thirty, and the hour. Now, I want the key time frame here. I want to pick one of these time frames here to do two things. Okay, the key time frame can do two things. First of all, I want it to be a label. And I want to see the label on the turn, and I want to see the label on the cross. Okay. Now, technically, if you really wanted to get, you could go 10 minute turn, and then you could go 10 minute cross. Okay. And then that would probably make more sense, but it does take up a lot of room. So you can see, oh, 10 minute turn and 10 minute cross. So now at least you know what's happening there. But of course, that does, you know, I'll leave it like that just so you know, but that can take up a little bit more room. Um, and then from here, if we come back into this, let's go through and just say, okay, so we got 10 minute turn, 10 minute cross. Uh, I want to be one and a half ATR away. Okay. So if you have it too close, you know, if you have it like this, then it's going to be right on top of everything. And, you know, you, sometimes, you know, it gets in, interferes with price, right? So what I'm doing here is just saying that, um, I want it to be a little bit further away, one and a half ATR. And then my, so my key time frame is time frame number three. Okay, that's for you to choose. And in this case, that's the 10 minute. And that key time frame, I'm going to get a label appear on the chart when there's a turn. And I'm also going to get a label appear on the chart when there's a cross. Okay, and I'm going to have that appear one and a half ATR away from the price. Now, what about an alert? Well, you know what? I want an alert also on the same time frame, which is going to be the 10 minute. And on the alert type, do I want an alert on a turn or a cross? And in this case, I want both. So what's great about this, I can hit OK and hit Apply. And then if I come over here to the message center, then I can see, um, you know, OK, great. Here was a chart alert when there was a turn up. Um, here was a chart, chart alert on a turn down, turn down, cross up. So these are all, so I've got these set up with uh, alerts, like with dings. And so I know when I hear a ding that I need to, you know, that something's happening here and I want to go and take a look at that. So I thought that was really cool because the idea here is now you don't necessarily have to stare at the chart, right? So then if we come back over here and this, oh, that's not what we're looking at. If we come back over here and then just say, okay, so great. Now, you're going to see there's another batch of choices and you can kind of modify the next 12. You know, so that was the alert type. We chose both. So now after that, there's six, there's two batches of six uh, to figure out. And what you want to do is just say like, okay, for signals on all the time frames, uh, what do I want to see? Okay. So I'm going to put, so you can do turn both or none or you know, turn, cross, both, or none. So first, let's just do all of them as none. None, none. And on these, I'm going to put no, 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 no. All right, so what this means then is I just don't want to see any anything. So now, when I look at this chart, you can see I don't, I don't see anything, right? 
it's like, oh, well, geez, where, where are my arrows and all those different things that I wanted? And so now I can kind of come back over here and say, okay, you know what? Um, yeah, you know, on the, uh, on the time frame zero, and you have to come up here and say, okay, that's the hourly. Um, I want to see, you know, I want to see crosses and turns. So I want to see both. And on time frame one, which is the 30 minute, um, I want to see, um, I want to see the crosses and in everything too. So I want to see both like, okay, so what does that look like? All right. So now you're going to see that you've got uh, a turn here when that larger time frame went over. Okay. So you can see that that's, that's pretty manageable. And, um, you know, and that's, you know, that, that's, that's pretty sweet, right? Now, where it gets trickier is if you come down here to the smaller time frames and say, you know what, I want to see both on the, on the two minute and the four minute. Yeah, baby. Well, now all of a sudden it's going to get a lot. So I actually don't like that at all. I don't think that's super useful. And so what I'll do then is I'll come back over here and just say, yeah, you know what? On um, the two minute and the four minute, um, I don't really need to see both. In fact, I only want to see a cross. I just want to see a cross above zero and here a cross above or below zero. So, you know, that's all I want to see there. But I don't mind seeing both on the 10 minute and all the other ones. Okay, so now I can hit OK. And now all of a sudden, you know, it's a little bit more manageable. Maybe still there's a lot. You know, there's, let's go back. I want to go back to SPX here. What we're trying to figure out here is how do we get enough information to work with so there's not enough noise? And we all know chop is chop, but I also want to know when it's clean that it's going to be clean. So, th so the first thing that we can look at is these labels to me are too big. So let's come back over and look at these labels and just say, yeah, okay, you know what? Let's just do 10T and then 10X. And I just do two Xs. It just makes it stand out a little bit. All right, so that'll help kind of clean it up a little bit, right? But there's still, you know, that's kind of a lot happening here. And we just want to know that it's like, okay, so, you know, these smaller time frames, when the, when the, every time the two minute is crossing, there's an arrow. Well, do I really need to know that? I mean, I can see it. Do I really need to know that every time the two minute is doing something? I really don't. So I'm just going to say none, you know, sc screw that one. And on the four minute, I just want to know the cross. So now let's see what that looks like. Well, suddenly that actually starts to clean it up a lot. So the moral of the story here is that the small time frame, in this case, this two minute, it's going to give you a lot of weird signals. And so I kind of look at it as kind of a, as a heads up um, to everything else and don't necessarily need to know um, when it's doing that. OK, so now I've got the two minute turned off and then the four minute, it'll just alert me if it crosses. And then any crosses are the white arrows. OK, um, and, you know, you don't even honestly need to see that either. You could say, OK, you know what, let's come back over here and say um for the four minute i don't want to see anything either and then for time frame three which is the 10 minute yeah that actually makes more sense so now what, the, what does this look like okay now suddenly it's even cleaner so now to me this is actually something to kind of work with and then visually i can see you know what's happening down here does that make sense so so that's that and then the last piece of this then is that do you want intra bar turns and or inter meaning that if it doesn't cross zero. And so right now I've got everything to, set to no. Well, as you can imagine, let's just say I put all these to yes. So these are the large time frames. Now what's gonna happen is we're gonna see a ton of arrows because of why. This every time uh, on this two minute here, every time it turns, it's gonna get an arrow and it turns all the time. So now if I hit apply and okay, it's like, um, well, surprisingly, I thought there'd be more than that. So I might have done something wrong. Let's come back here and look at it again. Same time sir as well. No, no. And then yes on everything else. Okay, so that's not too bad. So anyway, so that's so so that's what I, you know, I kind of like it like that. And, you know, these labels, you don't actually need to have the labels there if you don't want to. You know, that's up to you. I kind of like them. Uh, they kind of, you know, they just they kind of help kind of keep everything kind of managed. And then, of course, you know, if you're, you know, if you want to use, um, we talked about key times of day. 
I think that's a useful thing to see intraday. So you can kind of see like, okay, you know, what typically happens on any given day. And you can see today, you know, we gap down into 845 and then we sold off into 920. Uh, we popped, we came back into 940. We rallied into the European close. And then we really did nothing between then and the next key time frame, which was 220. And then from 240 on, we rallied into the close. And then if you're a student of the micro voodoo lines, then you could just say like, okay, awesome. Let me add the micro voodoo lines here. And now I've got some levels, you know, additional levels to kind of trade against. And so now it just kind of all kind of comes together. Today was pretty choppy. I mean, yesterday, this was a, a it was a really, it was a really amazing and volatile situations. So, you know, you can see we got the roll over here. And when we got here, you know, the 10 minute turned um, right here. Great. And then, you know, we just kind of took off here and then didn't get a 10 minute downturn till here. So that begs the next question. What are these bar colors? OK. And what about, you know, what's going on here? So this is something I also wanted. Well, I would miss it is that if you come down to and I think I'm on the wrong one. Yeah, I'm on the wrong one. So if you come down here. And so two, four, ten, yeah. So what color do I want? Well, the ten minute is time frame three. So I want the bar colors. Okay, so let's just do none. So now it's just a regular bar chart, right? Or you could do candlestick or 10x bars or whatever. But if I choose in this case, um time frame three, I'm actually choosing that it follows the pattern of the 10 minute oscillator. Okay. And then in terms of um, um, the colors and stuff like that, the globals, it's like a falling oscillator. I've got it as uh, whatever that is, purple, and then a rising oscillator is blue. You can change that to whatever you want. You could have falling oscillator red and then have this green. Um, I kind of like this. It's a little different. And then, um, yeah. Yeah. So, so what this bar now is, the bar is essentially the same color as this 10 minute. So if the 10 minute starts to roll over, then this also turns purple. So I just think it's a, it's a really cool way just to kind of stay in flow um, with what's going on, with what's going on in the market there. Okay, so that's the two minute one. Now, over here, I've got a 15 minute one, and it's just the same idea. And if we get rid of... So on this one, I'll have like the quant pivots and stuff like that too. Uh, but over here, then you can look at larger time frames. So I got the 15 minute, the 30 minute, the one hour, two hour, four hour, and daily. And then on this one, uh, the key time frame I have is two for the two hour. I want to know when the two hour is turning. And then I want to know when the when the two hour is crossing. Okay, and that gives me some information there. And alert time frame is two. Um, I've got you know, uh, these larger time frames, you're not going to really get all the same back and forth. So I actually don't mind seeing both the turns and the crosses. And let's do same side turn on that. And then for the alerts, I've got a cross up, cross down, turn up, turn down. And that alerts, you know, again, all come back here to alert type both, which is cross and turn and what time frame two. Well, that's the two hour chart. So now I can hit this and just say, okay, great. This is the 15 minute chart. I have the 15 minute, 30 minute hourly, you know, two hour, four hour and daily oscillators. And then what I'm seeing on the chart is that, you know, when they start to turn up here, I'll see the arrows. If they cross, I'll see these arrows. In fact, I'm gonna make those a little bigger. But then when the major one happens, you know, when the two hour, um, in this case, I wanna know if the two hour is doing it, Sometimes it'll happen off screen. So you just gotta, you know, be aware of that too. Some it's um if the price is at the very bottom. But you know, when the two hour turned here, that was kind of a big deal. And then when it crossed, that was kind of a big deal too. And then um, and then you can see that these other ones are crossing too. So the one thing I can see here that I'd want to change is I'd want to see these arrows a little bit bigger. So I'll come over here and just say edit studies. Uh, sometimes I always forget like which one has the arrows. Okay, yeah, turn up, turn down. So I'm just going to make these three at least. 
And there we go. So, so that's kind of what we got there. And so I find those are kind of nice. And on this one, I just put the, uh, on this SPX. So I've got the two hour quant pivots and I got the daily quant pivots and then I got the major voodoo lines. So you can see the major voodoo lines there. So I like that one. And then I can, I can just kind of keep both of these together during the day. If I'm looking at SPX. So ES, so the, you know, the two minute allows me to drill down a little bit more, kind of look at those key, you know, what's happening into those key times of day um, and stuff like that too. And then the 15 minute kind of allows me to see a little bit bigger time frame. And, you know, and today was kind of choppy. And so sure on something like this, you're going to kind of see some back and forth. Um, but what I like about this is that when there is kind of a bigger move, you know, it's a big cleaner move like this, you just can stay in. Like there's no reason to get out of this until you see the 10 minute turn. So on something like this, you know, that is like a 40, 50 point move. Um, what I like about this is that there's no reason to second guess it. And then if you are, you know, of course, if, uh, familiar with, um, you know, like the, uh, you know, reduce the size of this one a little bit. This is uh, Henry's auto, you know, ATR stop, you know, shift and reverse. I kind of like that too. And that can kind of help you if that's something that you want to look at. Although, you know, some, you know, it's not, not a super, it's, it's just a nice visual. It's like, okay, it'll be similar to some of these rotations too, but that's kind of that extra little extra. And today was choppy, right? So what's interesting on something like this is that over here, you can see the two minute is choppy, right? And that's why you want to look at something like a 15 minute chart. And you can see that it's not, you know, this is essentially, you know, the two hour is bullish and we're just kind of forming a bull flag. So it's always important, I say, like, yeah, sometimes when you're looking at something like this, it can kind of drive you nuts. But this 15-minute chart, you know, that that's that's pretty clean. So now we can kind of take all that and say, okay, um, you know, what does this look like on, you know, some of the other time frames and stuff like that? Well, you know, here's, um, let's see, that's the, well, I'll show you a couple more things and I'll just kind of see what questions and stuff like that you guys have. But so it's really just, you know, anything that you have here. So on the, um, as you guys know, the originally it kind of set it up, this was a really, the main thing was kind of these reversions to the mean. So the two that we just worked on, that was what I want to look at for quant pivots and micro voodoo lines. And then here is just kind of the reversions to the mean. And the reversion to the mean is so important, and especially in this market. So today, you know, the SPX gap down, now reversion to the mean intraday, um, there's essentially a couple of key moving averages. The most important one is the eight period EMA on the 15 minute chart. Second most important one is the 21 EMA from the 30 minute chart. And then you have the 50 EMA from the hourly and then the five EMA from the daily. They're all right together here. And on the SPX, you know, it's 41, basically 22 uh, to 41, 27. And that's why we're really kind of stuck in that range right now. But what you want to notice here is that when we get too far away from this ADMA, we snap back, okay? And here we got a little above it, and we kind of came back to it. And here we flushed, but then we snap back. Here we snap back. And so that's what I want to look at here. And what I can look at here is like, wow, we're down here. But guess what? All these things are starting, all these multiple time frames are starting to cross higher. Gee, I wonder what's going to happen. Oh, we snap back. And so that's that's where I find that it's useful. So here, you know, I'll look at the S&P futures, uh, the SPX, and they're going to be a little different because why? Because the S&P futures, of course, trade 24 hours. And so the levels and everything like that are going to be different, but they're obviously going to move the same. And then over here, you know, NDX, or if it's kind of like the stock of the day or or anything like that. Um, someone asked earlier about what about larger time frames. And so this is what a larger time frame can look like. And uh, this is... Here, let's let's dive in here because that's there shouldn't be a 10 minute cross on here. So on the larger time frame, so I've got the daily, two day, three day, four day, week and month, and then um, so I just so key time frame is the three day. Let's make it the four. Let's make it the two day. So the key time frame is the two day, and I'm just going to call it the two day turn, and then let's call it the two day cross. We'll make that one and a half ATR away from price. And then the alert time frame, I also want that to be the two days. So let's make the alert time frame four for time frame four. And what kind of alert that I want? I want both the turn there. 
And then since these are all larger time frames, I'm fine with both, both, both. Do I want same side turns? Yes. And then let's look at some bigger arrows here. Turn up, turn down, um, alerts. Now this ring, I loathe this ring. This thing drives me insane. So I changed this to the ding. That ring, it, it's like, it, every time I hear it, it's like my soul shatters, as my daughter would say. So ding, 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 much more pleasant. Okay, bada boom, bada bing. Now I've got something that's a little more like, okay, bigger picture. Now that's a lot of arrows and I can already tell that I don't like it. You know, it's too many arrows. And all that means is that I've got, you know, I've got some small time frame stuff in here that is, you know, kind of going, I, and I'm really just more concerned about what's what's kind of the bigger picture here. Like, okay, so on a daily then, I can come over here and say, you know, what don't I need? Well, so the time frame five, that's going to be the daily. Do I need both? Uh, the, do I need the turn and the cross? No, I just want the cross. And on this one, time frame four, um, that's the two day. Yeah, so I'll just do that. Cross. So a few things like that that you can do. And just so you just kind of play around with it. And you know, these mid-level turns now are going to be like all over the place. So the idea is you want it to be useful. You know, you want it to be useful for you. And so you can just kind of, and a lot of times in terms of clearing out the noise, it just means getting rid of some of the smaller time frame. You know, the smaller smaller time frame stuff isn't, you don't necessarily need it as much. So let's do that. Boom, boom. A little cleaner. But the main goal with something like this is that we look at this. This is like the NASDAQ, right? And when you see something like this, let's just say you're really bearish and you think the world's coming to an end, then it's like, wow, look at all these arrows. Everything's crossing higher. The two day has turned and now the two day has crossed. You'd be insane to stay bearish in something like that. And then you can kind of stay with this until what? Until the two day crosses, right? And so now where are we? So right now we're in a situation where we got the two day um the two day turned okay and in fact what i should do here is make the two day stand out more so i know which one the two, which one the two day is and so the two day is going to be time frame four uh time frame four and then i can come over here to the globals and just say okay so price bar um oh no that's not it four value four let's make that a little bit bigger and now I can see which one that is. And so now it makes you know a little bit more sense. It's like, okay, there it's turned down um, and et cetera, et cetera, if that makes sense. So I kind of like it on stuff like this. And I can see that, you know, we're starting to, you know, we're starting to turn here. Um, in fact, I'm wondering why today, let's come back over here. I want to look at one more thing. So a uh, key time frame is two day, two day. Alert time frame is four. Um, alert type both. And four signals both. Oh, right. So I need time frame four. Yes. Okay, there we go. So now we can kind of see that it, you know, it's trying to turn, you know, it's turning higher here and stuff like that too. Um, so stuff like that, I, I just find, I find pretty useful. Um, yeah, it's a good question. We actually, I don't, I'm not sure why it's not showing the, um, it should actually show, I'll have to ask Eric about that. There should be a two day T one here as well, unless it needs another day. Yeah. I'll double check on that. Oh, from two to four. Yeah. Let's double check. Yeah, I've got something up there that's not right. Key time frame. For, oh, thank you. Yeah. So I just so this is actually a good thing. So so what I did here is I've got key time frame is two, and what it's actually doing is saying that four days is the key time frame. That's actually not what I want. I want key time frame to be two days. So you do have to take a moment and just make sure that you know these are all lining up. Good catch. So I need to change this to four, and then. Boom, boom, boom. Alert timer is froze. Okay, there we go. There. Now, now it makes more sense. So again, you gotta, you know, again, it can get a little noisy if you uh, include a lot of the lower time frames, and you can kind of tweak that to what you want and what would work for you. 
Uh, all right, so let me see uh, what, so so generally what I'm doing is during the day then is, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm looking at these two charts, you know, on the ES, SPX, NASDAQ, I'm looking at micro voodoo lines, you know, and then some of the quant pivots and these rotations just kind of help me, you know, they don't, so I don't get shaken out of stuff. Um, you know, again, on choppy days like this, you want to make sure you're referring to the 15 minute chart too, just to kind of know what, like what's the path of least resistance here. Tip, you know, remember, like if these are blue, that just means that in this case, the key timeline, the two hour is gradually moving higher. And that's bullish. And generally, this that if it's going to be as long as it's like that, you're going to see continued resolution to the upside. And so that kind of helps put these little, you know, this little algo, you know, 15 point algo flush, it, you know, here it's it's not a big deal, right? And so it just kind of keeps that in mind. And then this was kind of that classic layout that we studied during the class where I've got SD. Uh, trend rotation, et cetera. Um, and then kind of however you want to look at it there. But I'd say the main, you know, the main takeaways on this, and there's a there's a written document on this too, but the main takeaways on this are, you know, first of all, and this is important, is that, you know, if you do get, um, you get labels for turns and crosses, uh, you get um, heads up when there's a turn, even if it doesn't cross zero, meaning, okay, here's a zero line. And you know we're crossing lower. It doesn't cross zero, and it turns back up. During the old way, you wouldn't get a signal that it turned back up because it would only trigger if it crossed zero first. That's actually really good because when you get something like that and it turns up without going below zero, that's super bullish. Just as it is super bearish if it's we're here and it crosses back up and then turns back down. You know it doesn't even cross zero. That's super bearish. Well, now you can know about that. Okay, and so that that's awesome. Um, and then you just have a lot of ability to customize, as you can see. Like, do you want, is this too many? Well, you can watch three if you want. Um, do you want to see the, you know, do you want to see those turns on everyone or just some of the main ones? Well, you can you can choose all that, and so you can really play around with it and kind of get it the way you want. Um, so it's been great. I've I've actually really been I've been very very pleased with it, and it just kind of helps stay on the right side of the market. And the main thing, of course, if you're looking at a two minute chart, you know, know there's going to be some noise. Um, one of the things I found that's been pretty clean, I did this today, um, a trade I did on the S&P futures today was, I think it was right, it was this morning. Oh, yeah, but I was looking at SPX. Um, and this was a great little scalp trade. And so um, I did this on the S&P futures, so right here. So we're falling falling, falling, falling. And so I see that the 10 minute has turned. Great. So I bought like five S&P futures at the market. And then um, and then I saw another arrow and I bought five more. And then we kind of came down and, you know, you can play, place a hard stop. And then we turn back up and cross. So I bought five more. And then um, you know, once you get the cross, that's kind of golden. And so I had 15 contracts. And then I just held them until I got the... Um, 10 minute the 10 minute cross so boom 10 minute cross so here so to me the big you know the the turns are a good heads up the cross is your confirmation and then you know you're going to get some back and forth it was a super slow day i mean my god i did yoga during this time and i kept a, my phone i said i just propped my phone up so i could see the charts in case something insane happened he's like okay downward facing dog john stop looking at your phone and but then when it crossed here at that point there's no reason to be in the futures anymore and so yeah i mean it was a good you know it was good for like 15 points um and you know it was a pretty slow day and 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 then also in the room of course we did do the um what did i add the uh 4125 4115 put credit spread and that we we held that and sold it at like whatever 380 and got out of it at 125 and that was you know and that was a little you know that was a little different because you could hold on through these whooshes and but why because guess what if you look over here at the higher time frame you know we're just hang we're hanging out you know we're just hanging out and 4125 here um that was the 4125 level and yeah we got the little algo flush but the whole point of spreads is that you can hold through you know you're always going to get that algo flush in this case we went to two hour you know the two hour h1s and then we l1s and then we bounced um, and that's normal and you know stuff like this too you can even leave some buy orders there for when it happens and, and things like that too um okay so i think that's it uh 
I know there's probably going to be questions, but I, you know, I, I can look through the questions, but a lot of this, it just, it's just, honestly, if you play around with it, you'll, you'll start to get the hang of it, but that's, that's what it is. And, you know, I think these updates uh, that have been made are, are, are really awesome. Um, you know, if you go back and you look at this, we'll kind of show you how to do it. Eric also put together some great written documentation. And then, so the deal with this then, of course, is that if you have these tools, these are all free updates. Like, you don't, you know, they're, they're going to be in your folder. Um, we'll have some of the shared charts and stuff like that too. If you uh, don't, if you don't have these tools and you would like them, uh, you can just come over here and let's see, let me see if I can do this special offer um, about John Carter. Okay. So I don't know where that goes. Um, so anyway, somewhere on here, you can probably uh, get this <laughs> or if somebody has a link for this, uh, just let me know. Uh, but I, I don't see it on here. And then um, what was the other one? Uh, there, there. So anyway, we'll, we'll, there's a link. There's a link here, and you can. Um, so so here's the deal. So if you have um, if you have the if you already have the quickets, okay. So you already have quickets, right? Uh, this is an update. You don't have, to have anything to do. Go to your class folder, and that's where you're going to see these updated tools, and that you can download into Thinkorswim. If you have Trading View, um, it's going to take another, I think, over the weekend, because uh, there's a lot of lot of stuff to do. So those are free free updates to the tools, and it's a lot of great work. And so you just go to your class folder. If you saw all this and you would like to get these tools, um, I don't know, Lorna, do you have a link or something for them? Uh, this one, I don't know if this is the right one, but um, you can um, purchase and there'll be a link posted uh, in the rooms there. And then if you're also interested in the micro voodoo lines, uh, there will also be an opportunity after the purchase of the quick hits. Um, I think you'll get an email with the micro uh, voodoo lines as well. And that's been kind of a staple uh, conversation uh, as well uh, in terms of our trading and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let me see. So I guess what happens here then is that you go down here and you hit claim this offer during a very limited time. Oh, so you can get 30% off of the quick hits. So, okay, that's awesome. So you can get 30% um, off of the quick hits or, and then also you can bundle the micro voodoo lines. So you can do that as a, that, or just say no thanks and complete my order. And if you do that, um, yeah, so that, that would be for the quick hits. And then if you want to do both, you could also do uh, the micro video lines. So anyway, that's, that's all on there. So yeah, just click the link. You can hit special offer and then you just hit claim this offer and then that'll take you through it. All right. Um, any other questions? We'll have this recorded. Obviously I'm using this in the room. And, and again, just as a reminder, if you've already got quick hits and you participated in the class, just go to your class folder and these updates will be there. If you're looking at this going like, oh my God, that looks awesome because they are, and you want to get them, um, there is a link that's posted and you can go there and then there's a 30% uh, off the quick hits. And then you can also upgrade to the micro voodoo lines if you'd like to add those as well. And as a reminder, what that looks like is, uh, you know, it's just these levels that this is the levels where these, these things just kind of bang back and forth all day. And that's what we've been trading against. All right. Most excellent. Um, let me see here. So that is the... Um, which one to use for your daily SPX trade? So I've been using, so I've been using the regular, the medium one, um, but I also like to go back and kind of check on the fastest one too. And 
you know, it's on the one hand, it's kind of, it can be kind of like six of one, half a dozen of the other, but um, this one, the SD, it, it is the quickest. So you're going to get the arrows and stuff like that here, um, the quickest and things like that. And you'll see when, you know, what I mean when you, you play around with it. So if we did uh, ES and ES and ES, like on all these, right, let's compare apples to apples, then you're going to see that, I mean, the first, you know, you're going to get faster turn signals on the SD, like you didn't get a turn signal until here on SD. Um, this this one's typically a little bit slower, but this is actually a good one to manage exits on because it, you know, kind of keeps you out of the wiggles. And that's all stuff we talk about in the class as well. But they're not, they're not vastly different, but this one, this one is the fastest. So I kind of like this one for entries, um, especially if I'm trading futures. Uh, so the, yeah, the 15 minute and the two minute, I find that those are really great combos with the micro voodoo. So, so there's really, remember, there's really two different things that work here. So for this, what I'm looking at is reversions to the mean, and that's that eight EMA, 15 minute chart, 21 EMA, 30 minute chart, um, the 50 minute and the hourly and the five. So that's kind of what this setup is for. And remember, this is that 3.0, um, Keltner channel on the hourly chart. So that's where we, and that's kind of where we see uh, moving average envelopes. Are we 1% away? If you guys remember all that kind of stuff from the class. So if I come over here and just say, you know what, on the 21, I want to know if we are, um, let's show the envelope, if we get 1% away from that, because I'll, oftentimes that's when you'll see, um, you know, kind of a, a reversal. And so like, especially like on the SPX. And so if, on, if it's quiet, it can be, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, there we go. So that's this is a little scrunched up. But the idea here is if you sell off into this band, you start to snap your way back. Uh, it's just that it was so narrow today, we didn't get anywhere close to that. Um, and so if I zoom in on this a little bit, you can see uh, we did gap up into these bands this morning or the other day and sold off after that. But you know, on more volatile days, you can see that they'll they'll kind of come together like that too. So I always like to know kind of where those are, and you just kind of get those reversions back to the mean. And so then we just can kind of dial up uh, and see where we are there. So that's kind of what all that is for. And so you've got so you've got those because you want to know where those moving averages are. Now I could add those moving averages onto here. I just don't like getting too many things. Like so, for this one to me is the level. So here's the micro voodoo lines. Here's the major voodoo lines and the quant pivots. Great. And then of course I'm looking at six screens, right? So what you can't see is off to my right. Um, I do have this over there, so I can see what's kind of going on as well. Okay, um, Lorna, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Do you want to hop on and cover anything? Like, will that help answer a lot of questions, or are we good? Does there is there anything else that I need to cover, or anything we need to do? Yeah, it might that might save seventeen thousand hours of uh, email questions. So let me uh, I'll sign off. I'll hang around here. But yeah, Lorna, if there's anything you want to look at or anything like that. Uh, you know, feel free. And uh, yeah, I think you guys will really be excited about these new updates. And thanks, Eric, for putting in all the work for those.